Natural gas, now the US's leading electricity source, is widely regarded as the cleanest fossil fuel. But even if it is, could it be our saviour in the battle against climate change? When we delve into the science, it becomes clear that no fossil fuel can be a substitute for renewables. The industry sells natural gas on the claim that it is vastly cleaner than other fossil fuels, particularly coal. For example, ConocoPhillips is the seventh largest natural gas company in the US and has a fact page on their website detailing how great their product is. A quick aside, ConocoPhillips specialises in gas exploration, that is looking for new resources, although the world already has discovered five times more fossil fuels than we could ever safely use. But back to their facts. While stressing how clean and cheap natural gas is, ConocoPhillips leaves some interesting things out. For example, they imply carbon dioxide is harmless, but they also manage to ignore any other greenhouse gases. But hey, maybe this is just me being unfair and we can put it down to a lack of proofreading. To avoid misrepresenting the facts, natural gas is definitely better than coal. That is if we agree that the quantity of CO2 emissions is the only thing that matters when comparing different types of fossil fuel. On average, coal does indeed produce twice as much CO2 as natural gas. But before we put all our eggs in one fossil fuel, we need to consider other greenhouse gases too. Maybe ConocoPhillips is biased and CO2 is not all that matters? Well, due to the different molecular structure of greenhouse gases, some absorb more heat than CO2, and so have a higher warming effect. Simply put, some other gases are worse than CO2. Much worse. The biggest offenders are the fluorinated gases. Sulfur hexafluoride leads this pack of troublemakers. Fortunately, when we consider all fluorinated gases, they only make up 3% of total emissions, and are not too significant next to CO2. Methane is the second most emitted greenhouse gas making up 10% of US emissions. It also has a warming effect much bigger than carbon dioxide. Because natural gas is itself largely methane, this is particularly relevant to today's video. Yet we hear the most about CO2, despite its lower warming potential, because it makes up 82% of emissions. How much worse are these other gases? Let's break it down. We find different warming effects using global warming potential. This measures how much CO2 would cause the same warming effect as one unit of another gas. CO2 is an easy starter. Because we are comparing it to itself, the score of CO2 is 1. That is, one unit of CO2 causes as much warming as one unit of CO2, just as one meter in meters is one meter. Turning to methane, one unit of methane causes as much warming as 28 units of CO2. However, as I mentioned previously, it is sulfur hexafluoride which is the worst greenhouse gas. To produce the same warming effect as one unit of this gas, we would need thousands of units of CO2. Using global warming potential, we can combine the effects of many different gases into one common measure, which we call CO2 equivalent. For example, if we produced one unit of electricity from the very real fossil fuel Imaginarium, we would emit 20 units of carbon dioxide and 2 units of methane. This would release 760 units of CO2. What does this mean for our comparison of coal and natural gas? Well, twice as much methane is released from burning natural gas. This is partially due to fugitive emissions. This exciting name refers to a rather more mundane process, the leakage of natural gas from equipment that is not completely airtight. While methane makes up 20% of natural gas's warming effect, this does not meet the huge volume of CO2 from coal. So our consideration of different gases is not enough to change the rankings, but methane is definitely not negligible. Does this mean natural gas is the long-term answer? Well, no. If we relied on natural gas to replace all energy produced from coal, we would only reduce emissions by less than a half, and this would not be enough to prevent catastrophic climate change. The EU claims we need to cut emissions by 80% of 1990 levels by 2050. Even if we move to the cleanest fossil fuel now, without renewables, we would not meet this target, and we would definitely not reach the required 100% reduction by 2100. What about in the short term? Well, 30 years is not a lot to play with when you have to restructure an entire economy. But natural gas has been advocated as a bridge fuel by members of the industry. That is, a step in the right direction, away from extreme pollution, allowing continued economic growth while renewable technologies continue to develop. Renewables are currently too expensive to be commercially viable on a large scale, and only investment will bring these costs down. But if we were to invest in natural gas infrastructure, we would divert these funds away from renewable resources, and any extra seconds gained on humanity's climate clock from a slightly reduced warming effect would be spent on turning the world upside down again, this time towards actual renewables.